Howdy friends and welcome to Plumbing with Tim. Today I'm coming to you from the south part of the county here in Brevard County, Grant, Florida. Right here at the All Breed Pet Resort, boarding and grooming. It's kind of loud, a lot of dogs and stuff. Got a call out here that they have no water. They're on a well system, so we're going to take a look at that. Now, like I said, this is a boarding kennel, so there's some dogs. You're going to hear a lot of those in the background. I'm going to start where the well system starts. Right here is your incoming water from your well. All right. It comes up through. I've got the valve shut off. As it comes through, it goes through a check valve, which we've talked about in the past. Comes up through, and there is the pump, the black pump right there, that actually pulls the water in from the outside where the well system itself is. Now remember you hear me talk in another video about these check valves. They're very important to have right after the well head because there's a flap inside of there that allows the water to draw in, but once the pump shuts off, that flap shuts so it holds a prime inside of your system. All right, now that you have your primary pump is drawing your water in, it comes up through and it goes into a holding tank that holds water. And inside of here is a float. I don't know if you can see that or not. There's a float that sits in there. And what that float does is as the water draws into this tank, this holding tank, so you have water on demand here, that water level goes down and as that float goes down, it gets to a point where it'll kick on this pump. This is the secondary pump which draws water out of the holding tank. Another check valve back through, comes in here, it makes a T. One side goes in and it travels over to where your softener as well as your purifying system is. And the other side comes over here and into your pressure tank, which causes and allows your system to keep a pressure of about 50 pounds on there. So our problem today is they have no water. They've got water, but they can't get into the building because this guy right here, the secondary pump, it's a one horsepower pump, it's shot. You turn it on and it just hums. And the back end of this thing is super, super hot. It won't run. So you can draw all the water you want inside of the tank, but it won't allow it to draw it into the business. Very important thing to do. If you're not sure exactly what it is that you're gonna have to do, don't be afraid to pick up your phone and go ahead and take some pictures of the exact setups. That way when you take this system out, you know exactly how it's gonna go back in. The first thing I did was turn off the valve for the incoming water that's coming from the well system. That was the first thing that I did. Then I came up here and I turned off the valve for the water coming out of the tank. That way we can isolate all this and not have water running and running and running, especially when we have to do some glue joints. All right, so as the pump would kick on to draw water to go into the business or to the building, it follows that line that you see down there. The white line travels up, comes up through here, and into a softener system. At that point, it travels out of the softener system, down through, and enters into the building right there. You also have two salt tanks that are for purifying as well. Because well water is hard and if you do not soften it or purify it, it will tear all your fixtures up inside of your house. But luckily today we don't have to worry about the softeners or the salt tanks or anything. We're going to work on that secondary pump. I just called for one, it's going to be on the way. But in the meantime we had to make sure that the power is completely off so we're not getting shocked because we've got to disconnect the pressure switch and the electricity going to the pump. Okay, so right here is the pressure switch. This is what regulates the pump to kick on and kick off. You know, maybe on at 30, off at 50. The only way to find that out is open up this lid on this pressure switch. And I'll show you how to do that. And on the back inside label, we'll tell you what the pressure li listing is for this pump. Of there. The inside cover for this pressure switch 
you can see listed right up in there we'll have two numbers this says 30 and 50 so it's a 30 50 switch it'll kick on at 30 pounds and kick back off at 50. It is the utmost importance when you're working around this to make sure that you have a multimeter and you test these terminals to make sure there's no power because you don't want no surprises and get shocked. All right, so here's the old pump that we took out of here. It's It's got some age to it, uh, and we're waiting on the new pump. Now, what causes these pumps to burn out like this? Well, a couple things. First of all, maybe the age and the use and stuff. Also, let's walk over here where the well system is, and I'm going to show you another reason why that pump might have burned itself out, and we're going to have to be ready for it. Remember, I showed you here the line that's coming in from the well has a check valve. It has a flap that opens up. You know, when the pump turns off, it shuts in order to keep water in the system to keep prime. Well, the line that coming out of the tank that's being drawn from the pump that feeds water to the building also has an inline check valve so that way it doesn't siphon its way back up into the tank. This may have failed and it has a flap in there and if it's stuck shut it can't draw water down through into where the pump system is and that pump could have been running and running and running and running and running and not able to draw any water from the aerator tank and which caused it at that point to get hot and burn out. Now, I by no means am a well water specialist, but I do know a few things when it comes to work on these systems because I find myself doing it from time to time. If you don't trust a plumber to come out or licensed technician, call yourself a well specialist to come out and take care of this problem for you. Um, we're going to get the new pump in and see if we can't get it primed. All right, so we got the brand new pump all installed, the electricity hooked up. I added a couple extra upgrades on here. I replaced that bad shutoff valve that had the broken dog ears, as well as the check valve. Just to be on the safe side, we're going to let the glue set up, and then we're going to fire this thing up. Okay, so before we get this thing fired up and everything, one last thing I want to go run through here is this pressure tank that's in the system. We want to test this to make sure that it's still good. And I'm going to do that by going and unscrewing the top little cap to the Schrader valve. We want to hear air come out, not water. If water squirts out, it's bad. Take our screwdriver and just hit the pin. Hear that? It's good. So now we just wait for the glue to set up for a few more minutes. All right, we got the new pump kit done. Let's take a look at the building pressure. See that? Don't see any kind of leaks. It's nice, tight. It should kick off here in just a second as soon as it uh, reaches its acquired uh, pressure. Well, hey, that's all the time we have for today. Man, this is a busy place, lots of dogs and stuff. And they're all telling me thank you for getting the water back going. Our well system turned out really good here. We got no leaks, everything's up and going, and everybody's happy. Listen, a well system requires pressure at all times. You can't have any kind of mistakes. So if you don't feel comfortable doing this kind of stuff, call yourself a West well specialist or licensed plumber. Until next time, from loud, noisy South Brevard County, Florida, this has been Plumbing with Tim. Keep plumbing.